So good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service. Um, normally, we in past years, we have at certain times of the month remembered people who have been baptised in the last five years in our parish churches. Over the last year or so, with all the interruption to what we normally do, that sort of practice has fallen into abeyance. But we've recently updated all our lists of different things and are going to try to get back to doing that. So this morning, although we'd normally ask families if they'd like to come and bring their child's baptism candle and come to the service, obviously that's not possible. Um, at the moment. So what we're going to do before we start our service is I'm going to ask us to remember two children who have been baptised in January over the previous five years. And we're going to light candles as we pray for them and their journey of faith. So I'm going to do that now. So we're going to light a candle as we remember Alfie Charles McGurk and as we light a candle for Mason Christopher Paul Paramos. And as we light these candles, we pray for them and their families and for all children baptised in our churches, all people baptised in our churches and the families of those who've been baptised. And very appropriate this morning as our gospel reading reminds us of the call of Philip and Nathaniel. So we pray for all of us and all those baptised for their journeys of faith. So we're going to have our first hymn now, which is Christ is the one who calls.
grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. <clears throat> Let us therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let us pray. 
Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So could I ask you, please, if you're not actually speaking or taking part in the service, to make sure that your microphone is on mute? The first reading is from Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom 
and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations, and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. Yeah. <clears throat> Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than that. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> May the words of our hearts and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, usually I would just plump for the gospel reading on which to preach. But this week, I thought I'd take a leaf out of Philippa's book and try and do something that covered all the readings for this morning's service. So this has been a challenge, Philippa, thank you. The readings for this morning, and the only one we haven't referred to in the service is Psalm 139, which is known as the Psalm of the Inescapable God. But from us across the scriptures, these readings speak of turning points which are heralded by hearing and responding. In the story from the book of Samuel, we hear the tale of Samuel being called by God. He doesn't know who is calling him and he takes the call to be that of Eli. Eli listens to Samuel and after being disturbed, he finally recognizes that it is God who is calling Samuel. So sensitively, he tells Samuel to lie back down. And if he hears the call again to say, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. And with that response, Samuel listens to the Lord. He begins to know the Lord. And when we read on, we learn that as Samuel grew, the Lord was with him and that the people knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. Our psalm today, Psalm 139, is one of my favourites and it begins, O Lord, you search me and you know me. I have to admit that when I was a teenager, I remember going to an event at which this psalm was referred to and the fact that God could see all that we were doing 24 hours of every day and that I found very unnerving at the time but now I find great comfort in this psalm the fact that he does know me and that he is the inescapable God God has known each one of us from before our days were even numbered. He hears us when we cry out to him. He knows our inner thoughts all the time. And he sensitively leads us on our journey with him throughout our days, whatever each day brings for us, unknown to us and yet known by him. The psalm ends with this verse. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This psalm speaks of the bond and relationship that God invites us into with him. Inescapable, yes. Incomprehensible to us, oh yes. A turning point as we seek to follow his way, absolutely yes. And that relationship, truly wonderful? Yes. So in light of this wonderful relationship that we can have with God, it is no wonder that in the reading from Revelation, John weeps bitterly when there is no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth worthy to open up the scroll. As he weeps, one of the elders hears him and sensitively says, do not weep. This marks the turning point as the lamb comes forward and takes that scroll and the elders and the angels join in worship with songs and praise. And our gospel reading is another example of a turning point. Another case of hearing and responding. 
First, we hear Philip being called by Jesus. Follow me. I can imagine that in his rush to bring Nathaniel the news, that Philip might well have been breathless when he caught up with him. He's in such a rush to tell his tale that he almost falls over his words. In one translation, it reads like this. We found the one about whom Moses wrote in the law and about whom the prophet spoke. And um, I mean, Jesus, the son of Joseph, the man from Nazareth. Just like Andrew, Philip just can't keep the good news in. He's so excited. Nathaniel, on the other hand, responds with a bit of derision. Hmm. Can anything come out of good come out of Nazareth? Local rivalry being just as strong then as it is now. Geordies and Mackhams, need I say more? I doubt that Nathaniel's response had any impact on Philip, though, because he's just buzzing. And he simply says, come and see. It is when Nathaniel meets and talks with Jesus that the turning point comes. He's taken aback by Jesus's comment that he is a genuine Israelite, a man in whose heart there is no deceit. Such a comment was high praise and tribute for an Israelite to receive. How could Jesus know that already about Nathaniel? They'd only just met. Jesus told him that he had already seen him under the fig tree. And that would have held even more significance for Nathaniel, because for the Jews, the fig tree stood for peace. Peace was when a man could be undisturbed under his own vine and fig tree, a place to meditate under the shady roof of its branches. Had Nathaniel been sat under his fig tree? and thinking on God's promises, praying for God's chosen one to come. At that moment, Nathaniel knew that Jesus had seen his innermost feelings in the depths of his heart. In that turning point, Nathaniel recognised Jesus for who he is, proclaiming, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Nathaniel knew that Jesus is the one who satisfies the longing of our waiting, seeking hearts. So, as we are in the first month of a new year, having put last year well and truly behind us, we're hoping and praying for the vaccine programme to be the turning point of the pandemic, staying at home to keep everyone safe. And whilst we stay at home, I would ask you to take some time and reflect on the turning points that have been in your journey with God. How does he speak to you? Do you listen? Do you respond? Now, in these days, Perhaps more than ever, we need people who, like Samuel, John, Philip and Nathaniel, will keep themselves sensitive to God. God has a message for the world in every generation, but that message cannot be delivered until someone is found capable of receiving it. Day by day, we as Christians either fit or unfit ourselves to receive that message from God. So let us go this morning and be like the psalmist seeking God and ask him to lead us in the way everlasting. Amen.
So standing in the tradition of Eli, Samuel, John, Philip, Nathaniel, and so many more, we profess the faith, our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving Lord, loving Lord, we open our hearts and minds to Jesus and bring our cares and concerns for your world and your people. The Church. We pray for the worldwide Christian Church in all its diversity, bringing the elements of different cultures into their worship and in the service of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for Christian unity for the Lutheran and United Reformed Churches, for our link diocese of Winchester, for Norham Deanery, especially the people and ministries of the parishes of Holy Ireland, Norham and Dudo. We pray for those baptized in the month of January over the last five years, out of Alfie Charles McGurk and Mason Christopher Paul Paramos. Lord, in your mercy, oh, yeah. the world. We pray for all those troubled parts of the world where people are suffering as a result of terrorism, of fighting, of hunger, of disease, of natural disaster. We pray that your spirit may so move in the hearts of people that the barriers of fear race, suspicion and hatred, which separates so many, may crumble and disappear. Bring peace and hope, and above all, expressions of love into their lives. We pray for your blessing on our own country and all her varied peoples, for the Queen and members of her family, for national and local governments, for decision makers during the pandemic remembering especially those who serve us in our local community. May wisdom, justice and compassion guide them towards bringing about the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, for the community. From the benefit cycle, we pray for all who live and work in Meadowfield Road. We also pray for Northumberland County Council, for our NHS and all healthcare workers and volunteers. May moments of personal peace and hope accompany their generous struggle to support others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The sick. Lord, we bring before you all those who are suffering in body mind or spirit. 
for those who are anxiously waiting for a medical diagnosis and treatments at this time for those in hospital and those suffering from COVID. May they experience the courage and support that they and their families need. We especially pray at this time for Margaret Chambers, Margaret Dixon, Jennifer Emmett, Gwyneth Matthews, Derek Marshall, Mike Connell, Chris Pringle. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, we pray for the passed away. We pray for those who died recently and for those whose anniversaries fall at this time, as we name Iris May Simpson, Patricia known as Paddy Travis, Francis Lowen, Michael Kingsley Allen, Annie Constance, known as Connie Phillips, William Coley, known as Bill Luke, Mavis Marshall, Margaret Elaine Morgan. May they rest in your love and be renewed and restored by your almighty power. Comfort, we pray, those that mourn them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, well, yeah. Finally, may we as Christians be united in love and prayer while responding to each other's differences. May we celebrate our variety while facing a common purpose as each pursues gladly our own mission as we journey through life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come to the peace and we'll offer each other a sign of peace as we have been doing now for many months by just waving at each other. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And let's offer to one another a sign of that peace. Gracious God, accept these gifts we offer, and with them our lives, to be used in your service, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All honour and praise be yours, always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time, we celebrate your glory, made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise.
accept our praise as Heavenly Father through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you, you destroyed, destroyed our, our death. death. Rising, Rising, you restored our life. life. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come, come in glory. glory. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honour and, honor and glory and power be, be yours forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread as a symbol that whether together or virtually at home, we all share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And so we say together our prayer of spiritual communion. In, In union, union Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father with, with your people, people throughout the world and across the centuries, 
gathered to make communion, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood, we offer you praise and thanksgiving, even though we are not now able to taste the bread of heaven and drink the cup of life, we pray that you will unite us with all the baptised and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in us and send your Holy Spirit that we may be filled with your presence. So let us pray. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news that we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> so just before the blessing, a few things, my thanks to Ralph, to Jane and to Lynn for helping lead the service this morning. Um, you will see on the notice sheet there are various things. Um, if you haven't have forgotten so far to pay your magazine subscriptions, we would be grateful to receive those because a lot of people who have subscribed in the past haven't yet paid. And at the moment we are sending the magazine out by post to some people um, and we can't keep doing that unless we receive everybody's subscription. So if you haven't paid, it would be great if you could, or at least let us know that you're going to pay at some point in the future if you can't manage that at the moment because you can't get out. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is there's various things about various scams that are going around. I received something, Barbara Bracia sent us something that she'd received last week. And I then received something from the diocese about this. There are various scams going around. So please do read the information on the notice sheet about that. Um, in terms of the vaccine, you will not, you're not, it, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. So if anybody asks you for money and personal details, it's a scam because the surgery will have your personal details and the vaccine is free. So please be very careful. Um, about text messages that you might receive or emails that you might receive and clicking on links. Um, there's some advice on the government website about this on, on the cyber security, which the National Cyber Security Centre has advice on this as well. So please do be very careful about things that you receive, asking you to click on links and emails um, or asking you to, um, you know, give money or give bank details and so on. Um, on the subject of online security and things like that, um, 
we've come a long way, I think, since this time last year, when many of us would have struggled and have, you know, wouldn't have been doing something like this. So I think all of us um, in the last year have been on a steep learning curve. Um, however, you know, some of the things we've learned, we may find a bit shaky and we may want to increase our knowledge a bit. Um, I did find something the other week about sort of um, computing, but I did notice this course that I've put on, um, on the notice, notice sheet this week, which is from the Open University and their Open Learn website. And it's about um, becoming more confident online. So the link is there if anybody's interested in pursuing that. And I think that's it. So thank you again to those who helped lead the service. And let's pray for God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And so we have our final hymn. So please do stay for a chat and if you want a cup of coffee at the end of the service. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.